Hi you guys, welcome back to Wellington Filming, Painting and Decorating, Trade Secrets. Right, if you want to uh, visit my After Hours VIP Club, check out the link below, okay? So that's that little arrow down there, just click on that and click on the link. And uh, go to my After Hours VIP Club, check it out. Hi you guys and welcome back to Wallington Filming, Painting and Decorating, Trade Secrets. Okay, so today what I'm going to do is show you how to paint this frame from start to finish, okay? And what I'm going to do is paint it in this Dulux Trade Sacking Wood. Now this is an oil based finish, okay? Right, so that's what I'm going to do with it. So the procedure is rub it down, dust it off undercoat it, denib it, and then two coats of, of that uh, oil-based satin finish, okay? So one undercoat and two satins uh, with denibbing in between and dusting off. Right, so uh, let me show you how to do that. Right. So what we'll do now is to start off by rubbing the old frame down, a bit boring I know. This actual frame is a MDF so it's not the type of uh, frame I prefer to, to paint but this is what's in new builds nowadays, okay? Better off if you've got like a copper wood frame even though it would be like soft wood, okay? So the disadvantage of this uh, MDF, it does like fur up in between coats. So you do have to give it a, a denib and a dust off in between coats. And uh, you know, if you're not too happy about dust, put yourself a dust mask on, okay? Because you do you do get quite a lot of dust floating around when you uh, rub these frames down. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. Let's get it rubbed down. Right, so basically start at the top and do your two sides. Uh, also what I've got here is some um, this is actual Dulux trade scratch. It's a P80, so it's quite coarse, okay? When you're dealing with MDF yeah, frame, right? give it a good look down, but try not to take too much off the edges so you take, take off that primer that's already on there. Thank you. 
Nothing is doing much, but it's good to tend to get a lot of fat stuff on the frame in new build. <coughs> that door up a bit. Right, so that's the frame actually rubbed down. So what I'm going to do now is just, obviously I'm going to dust it off. I'm a bit too tight to buy a proper dust brush, so I'm using this like 30 odd pound four inch brush for me dusting off. Not advisable then. to wear your brushes down though, for cutting in a little bit if you were uh, if you use them for dusting off as well. Where the lock keep is, blow that out or dust it off. Otherwise you'll pick that up. especially if you're working in a, in a new plot, to make sure you don't pick up any bits, you can just blow and it'll get rid of most of it. <coughs> like that. Because sometimes if you use brushes, dust brushes a bit worn down, it's a bit hard to get at the right in the crevices down the bottom of the frame. You see how dust is around it. Dust it off. That's now ready for undercoating, so I'm going to get to that and show you how to do all that. Okay? So now I'm just going to show you uh, how I'll go about undercoating this frame. Okay, uh, what's been specified on this particular building site is a water-based undercoat. <coughs> so I'm using this Armstead uh, quick drying uh, acrylic wood primer. It's basically uh, just a water-based undercoat. Okay, good stuff. This uh, dry bed quick. And because it's like acrylic, it um, fills all the gaps 
where the archer meets the casing, so that's quite good. Uh, obviously, you're still probably going to do some gunning up between your archer and your uh, casing, which I've already done. Okay, so that's why I'm using the water based undercoat. And as you know, me, I like to use an empty emulsion tub for working out of. Basically, saves me from carrying um, uh, paint kettles around in the car because I don't use a van, okay? And the good thing about this is when I finish using it for undercoat and glossing, I just put it in the skip. Right, so. Let me show you undercoat in this, okay? So, like the most things, start at the top. Give it a nice thick, thick coat. Don't scrape it up. Nice good coat. And this is the actual Hamilton synthetic brush I'm using, which I did a video on, on how to trim it down. So you might want to check that out. Okay. side of the architecture. I tend to use this uh, brush and trim down on just about nearly everything it's going to do. So quite a good brush. Does its job when it's trimmed down. If you are using like an oil based paint, like I said before, you know, if you've got, if you've got the chance to open up a few windows and stuff, because the fumes do get a bit much off the oil base, you don't want to end up with a bad head at the end of the day, so give yourself plenty of uh, ventilation. Uh, 
as rough as we can to let the fill up on the cow so we can finish them up. You know what coffee is like. Just do the job and disappear. So, so when you do the actual dog, just make sure you feather off where you've gone round it there. Front of the door edge. Trip again. This is where you need quite a good brush which allows you to uh, cut in. It's the same procedure for when you're putting the, uh, the satin wood on. Same procedure for painting. But I will show you that anyway. Okay, so here's your inside of the frame. Obviously, with this this bit of architecture here, I'm not going to be able to like undercoat or finish that back edge, unless of course I'm going to hit the wall <coughs> and then re-emulsion that. But I'm not going to do that with this frame, okay? So same again. Bring the back edge of this off if you do.
quite solid as it's dry. I mean, it's dry, starting to dry already, but it's got to look quite solid already just for one coat. Right, that's it, undercoated. So what we're gonna do now is leave that to dry, okay? Come back and uh, de-nib the whole frame, ready for the uh, satin finish, okay? So we'll get back to that as soon as that's dry. Right, you guys, frame's all dry <coughs> with the undercoat, okay? So what I'll do now is just check off that uh, roughness on the frame due to it being MDF and it was uh, <coughs> undercoated in water based uh, you've got a bit of a rough edge on this now so it needs a bit of a sand down so what we're going to use here is a, a sanding pad uh, it's a medium to coarse grade uh, sanding pad okay get these from just about anywhere uh, just give you a quick look at that look, spongy effect, okay, so what I'm going to do now is just rub all this frame down and then it's ready for um, satin finish and uh, due, due to the fact that I've got doors to do as well I'll be bringing the door edges in at the same time as the frame but if you've uh, not got doors to do obviously you've not got to do that. So what I'm going to do is rub down but I'm not going to lie go too hard with the rubbing down because I don't want to take the actual undercoat off the edges of the armatures etc. So I'm just going to give it a rub down but I'm not going to go too mad on that as long as it's smooth. Right. I mean, you could also use like a fine grade 180 sandpaper, but uh, I find these a little bit quicker to use and they do the same sort of job. sand down now, frames are nice and smooth, not took the edges off the arbitrary, so now we need to give it a bit of a dust off again, and uh, a bit of a dust off around the bottom of these frames, because I'm doing the door edges, just going to dust them off as well. Right, so that's all done. 
dust it off, rub down, dust it off, and that's ready for two coats of the uh, oil based sacking finish now. Nice and smooth on there. I must point out <coughs> um, either before you run the coat or at this stage, uh, if you find any gaps in the aperture, you'll need to gun fill them. I've actually done that uh, at quite an early stage already. So, but if you know, if you still come across a few gaps around here on the upper trips, gun fill them now. So they're going off ready for the satin. Right, so okay, let's put the final coats on. Right then guys, now at the stage, like I say, it's all rubbed down, dusted off, and we're at the stage to put the uh, oil-based satin finish on, okay? So this is the first coat. So obviously I'm going to start at the top, down the sides. Okay, so uh, let me show you doing that. You need a decent brush for actually doing the majority of the frame, and then like a little cutting in brush to do down the side of the aperture. Okay? So, as always, start at the top. This satin wood is a bit like putting a bit like putting undercoat on, so you can go, put a good thickness of it on and it won't run as much as like gloss will, okay? So put a decent coat on. As with any oil based paint, try and do it in a well ventilated area, i.e., door open or a couple of windows open or something like that. Just so you're not breathing in all them fumes. Ways of actually painting down the frame. I mean, some, some people just do like one side and then do the other side. Just depends what makes you feel more comfortable to the way you actually put the finished coat on the frame. section of that. Yeah. 
now I'm going to cut this in. Some people do it different ways. I tend to do it all different ways, just so I don't get uh, bored of doing it the same way, to be honest. Like in this pot, there's about 14 frames. So quite a few frames to paint. But ideally, if you develop your own routine on how to paint a frame and continue that routine through the whole house, if you've got like a, a whole plot to paint the frames, if you continue the same routine, which makes you comfortable, then it, uh, you'll find you actually get all the frames coated up a lot quicker because you're sticking to one routine. This particular plot, whether you can see it or not, but it's got dummy hinges on. So what will happen is, well, the dummy, dummy hinges allow me to paint over them. And what that means at a later stage, they'll put brand new hinges on, which is quite good because if you have to. Cut round hinges just take a lot longer to paint, paint a frame. But these are being replaced with brand new ones at the latest stage, so that's quite good. Like I say, I've got a door to paint, so. Actual top edge of the door frame. I do that with the uh, with a roller when I roll the doors. And then just when you've done a door edge, you see, just skim over that edge, make sure you're not got fat lip. Because if you've got 
brush is quite floppy. It's quite difficult to cut in with some speed. So. Do the up and down motion and end up with laying it off like that. So you have to go deep brush marks in the paint. Right, so that's the specify two satin so that's what it's going to get so I'll, we'll come back and I'll show you for me the second coat on that right then guys second coat of uh, satin wood on this door frame okay uh, I've left this for 24 hours and it's bone dry as you can see right so when it comes to the second coat of your satin wood uh, what I'm doing, I'm just working out the tin, but I have added a little bit of turps to this, or oil, as we call it, okay? So I've added a bit of turps to thin it down a bit, because there's no need to put it on neat on the second coat. Basically, what you're doing with the second coat is, is what we call flashing over the frame. So uh, a lot of guys will just flash over it and go down three quarters of the way down. But I'm gonna paint the whole frame again but there's no need for me to cut in down the sides of architrice because they're, they're, they're fine. Uh, <coughs> so what I'm gonna do is just recoat this up. Now the, the good thing about giving it the second coat, obviously, is like it's gonna look solid as a rock now. And um, depending on how well you've actually rubbed the frame and prepped the frame yourself, um, this doesn't need denibbing or anything. It's perfectly smooth and in good condition. So all I'm gonna do is just put another coat on, okay? Uh, I've been doing the doors all morning, so the doors are done. I've not got to do the door edges or anything again because I've done them already. So just basically put another coat on the frame, okay? Now this doesn't take as long as it does when you do the first coat. So I'm not putting it on neat, I have added a bit of turps to it, so it goes on a lot easier. And because you're uh, painting over like a, a pre, you know, like a finished surface already for the, sec for the second coat, you know, it, it does go on a lot smoother. Start, start to get a bit of a, 
bit of an headache now. So get some ventilation in the room. I don't know what it is about this satin wood, but it stinks, I can assure you. Painting near the bottom of the frame, especially on the second coat, you don't need to hit the floor or get right to the very bottom. You can come up by a couple of mils so you're not touching the floor. New brush. some habits I mean it's like you don't you don't have to get when you need to do the bottom of the frame because as you can see I can get there by standing up just tend to pick a few bad habits up as you go along through the years And that's how you do a door frame in oil based satin finish from start to finish. Okay, so I uh, hope you enjoyed that video. Another day, another dollar. Right, so thanks for all my subscribers. Um, don't forget to subscribe yourself, thumbs up, comments where it's welcome. And don't forget to follow me on things like Instagram. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and the website Tumblr. Okay, first person to follow me on one of those sites because I don't seem to be having much luck with that just lately. So, the first person to follow me on Instagram or anything like that, I've got a free t shirt to give away with wanted filming, painting, decorating, trade secrets on it. Okay, so follow me on all them things. So, until next time. Catch you later.
Hi you guys, welcome back to Wellington Filming, Painting and Decorating Trade Secrets. Right, if you want to uh, visit my After Hours VIP Club, check out the link below, okay? So that's that little arrow down there, just click on that and click on the link and uh, go to my After Hours VIP Club. Check it out.